Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about the breakpoint extension to SAS and how you can use its basic functions to build a responsive site within Omega 4. So now, in the last video, we had this layout that we made, and it was really just these two columns, and we said this one is going to be, you know, like four columns wide or whatever, and this one's going to be nine. I forget the exact numbers. I'll have to check. But um, basically, it's it's only responding to its container, right? We gave its container a max width of 960, or we gave it a width of 960. Um, of course, if we got rid of this width, as you saw before, the uh, page is now responding. But uh, well, what's more, if you want the classic type of responsive design, we're able to change things at breakpoints, right? And of course, you could just write your own media queries and do it that way. But um, as we've shown and talked about before, SAS actually has an extension called breakpoint that we're bringing in with this import statement and Omega 4 makes good use of that. And let's show how you can set your own breakpoints and, uh, and then use this module to build a responsive site. So in this first video, all we're simply going to do is show you how to use breakpoints. So now to set up breakpoints, I'm actually going to put this in my uh, grid variables. You can create your own breakpoints, uh, partial or something like that if you want. Uh, at this point, this thing only has two lines in it. It's not too complex, right? So what you need to do is to basically assign uh, pixel values or M values to variables. And then you're gonna be using those variables with a mixin. And that mixin is going to basically wrap everything in a media query. Now, what's nice about this approach is that you can actually use your media queries where your content is, right? So if I'm building out my navigation in my navigation partial, and I have my mobile first CSS here, and I wanna put my desktop or my tablet CSS, I can actually put it directly below it, and then you don't have to write out your media queries every time, you can use use this breakpoint mixin, and that makes things really easy, and then when you compile it all, it, uh, it basically uh, writes it into your CSS like normal with uh, media queries. Well, another great thing that Breakpoint allows you to do is it also allows for a no query style of uh, CSS. And you see this no query file, right? And this is something really cool about Breakpoint that I really enjoy because older browsers that don't support media queries, you have a couple of options. You can use something like respond.js, which tries to make them responsive using JavaScript, or I really like this philosophy, maybe even a little bit better, because I mean, if you're on IE, you don't really need the site to be responsive, because most likely if you're using IE7, you're on a desktop or something like that. So uh, what this does is it renders your style sheets with all of the code without the media queries. So it still does your mobile first, then your tablet next, then your desktop next, right? But your desktop, because it's defined last, is overriding everything. Therefore, IE is only going to be getting the desktop styles. So, well, it's gonna be getting the complete styles, but it'll still be getting the desktop styles. And it's not going to be responsive, but it makes things really easy. Now, I'll be going over exactly how to do all this later on in a couple of videos, because it does require an additional step or two, but nothing crazy. So let's get back to our grid.scss, and let's define some widths, right? So let's say our tablet width is going to be 44 M's. And let's say our desktop width is going to be 70 M's. Now I've pulled these two widths, 44 M's and 70 M's for the tablet and desktop directly from the ohm theme, uh, in case you're wondering where exactly I got these widths. But we can now use these widths in our breakpoints uh, mix in here. So to illustrate this, I'm actually just going to do a quick uh, demonstration. So we can say the body uh, background is going to be um, just yellow, right? And now we want to define this at a tablet and a desktop. We want the, the color to be different. 
right? So how would we go about doing that? Well, this is where the mixin comes in handy for our breakpoints. So what we can do now is I can use add include, which is of course how we've been doing mixins, and we can say breakpoint. So you're basically just saying, I want a breakpoint and I'm going to use tablet breakpoint. And then now inside of this, just like we would our media query, you can wrap it and say it like that. Also, let's do a desktop. And let's say, no. Okay. So now if I come to our site, you'll notice it's already green. And if I resize, once I hit these breakpoints, it's going to, of course, change based on how we had the site. So what's great about this is that you can use this mixin anywhere, right? Let's say you had just one tiny little thing inside of your page change on a single breakpoint. Let's say on page, um, uh, this might be a bad example, but let's just say for the desktop inside of all paragraphs inside of page, you want to have them increase their font size. So uh, we could say paragraphs, font size, and we can just say 1.8 m's, right? So we've actually included this mixin within uh, a, some of our CSS here. And since this is SAS, it's basically gonna get to this and it's gonna pull this out and wrap it in a media query. So now if we save this, you'll see our font size is much bigger. Of course, our paragraph font size. And once we get down to desk or tablet, it gets much smaller, same with phone. So not only can you wrap large sections of your code in these mixins like media queries, you can also use them within uh, nested SAS selectors. So this is excellent, right? It offers a ton of flexibility. But really, this is just gracing the surface of what Breakpoint is really capable of, especially with, uh, once you're using Singularity. But what happens if you wanted to have a media query that was saying uh, a min width of something and a max width of something, right? You want it to be directly between two. Well, we can do that pretty easily. In fact, we can do that super easily. Uh, all we have to do is when we define our, our variable that we're going to be using in our breakpoint, uh, we can just say, um, I'm just gonna name this between because this is just gonna be temporary. Let's say we want this uh, once the width is between, uh, let's just say some very specific sizes here. If we say between 20 M's and 35 M's and just like that. So all you have to do is declare two widths and then a space in between them. And now when we give our uh, breakpoint, let's come here and do another hit include breakpoint. We can say between, just like that. And you notice, I mean, look at how easy that is. You don't have to do anything specific. You don't have to say min width, max width, anything like that. Uh, you just say, use this variable. And breakpoint's gonna know what to do. So we can say body, no, not, okay, body, BG. Um, in the color, we'll just have this be red because we haven't used red yet. And we've used all the other ugly colors. So let's come back to our site here. I'm gonna refresh for good measure because I don't always know if it auto reloaded. And you'll notice we have our green, we have our blue, and we have our yellow. But once it gets to that spot, it's gonna be red. And if we go uh, narrower than that, if, well, it's not going to let us go narrower than that unless we're using inspect on the side. So let's do that. If we go narrower, you'll see it goes back to yellow. So we go yellow, red, yellow, blue, green. So that's how you can use variables to make pairs or basically your normal widths for breakpoints. And if we check out the CSS in this, you'll see it's nothing crazy or nothing that you haven't uh, seen before. Just ignore this uh, debug info. We can get rid of that later, uh, but you'll see it's really just outputting this 
at media min width 20 ms and max width 35 ms which is what you should used to be seeing with breakpoints or with media queries right so in the next couple of videos we're going to talk more about breakpoints we're going to talk more about using them together with singularity and we're going to create some cool stuff we're going to create our grid we're going to have a responsive a total responsive grid by the end of the next video and then i'm going to try to use things like no query and we're going to keep going from there so as always this is scott with level up tuts if you have any questions or comments leave a comment in the video or hit us up at twitter at level up tuts let us know what you're thinking we love to hear from you thanks for watching and bye